What's up, everybody? Today we've got something special. I thought that was somebody. Uh, that's funny. What's up, everybody? Now we've got something new for you today. We're going to be highlighting one of the most staple quilt blocks out there. One that has had much success in the industry, and not only that, it's been around since the beginning of quilting, which is the churn dash. Let's get started. The Churn Dash is an iconic quilt block. It originated in the 1800s, but not only that, it is a nine patch construction block, which makes it very easy and very simple to do. But where does it get its name from? Well, if you look inside of a butter churn, it kind of resembles this block, hence the name Churn Dash. But it has very many other names as well. So what are some of these other names that we call the Churn Dash? Well, you have the Fisherman's Reel, you have the Broken Plate, hole in barn door and there's a lot more but you can see why we ended up with churn dash it's a little bit easier to say but not only that in the 1800s this would have been one of the very first blocks that you practiced so if you were a beginning quilter you better bet that you would have done a churn dash i love learning about these quilt blocks because you'll realize that this particular one the churn dash has been inspiring us for over 200 years. Not only that, we've seen it throughout time in some of the oldest quilts that we have still in museums, which is absolutely amazing. And I love how creators and content creators and designers are taking advantage of this simple block. It's been used in Civil War quilts, all the way up to more modern quilts, which is a J. Wicker Fresh quilt that has churn dashes and some other stuff. The churn dash really is a fundamental building block in the quilting industry. One of my personal favorites is a churn dash in a two-tone colorway, which I'll be showing you here next. As I've said a million times in the past, I love myself a two-tone quilt. So that's what I'm gonna be showing you how to make here is a two-tone quilt block of the churn dash. I'm gonna show it to you in two different colorways. Let's pick out a blue, let's pick out a red very iconic here so I got my blue that looks good here let's jump into a red as well so I'll have a blue block and a red block now we need a background color pick out whatever you like me personally I always go into white or I do black in this case I'm gonna jump with the white make sure that when you're picking out a white that you're picking out the white that you like a lot of times when you go into a quilt store, you run in here and you just grab one bolt of white here and it's an off-white or a porcelain or a snow white or any of those other whites. Make sure it's the white that you want. For me, I'm going to just go with White White by Riley Blake. It's one of my preferred, which is that guy right there. Now that we've got our fabric, we are all set. Let's jump into the studio and show you how you make a churn dash. So guys, we are here in the studio now to show you how you make this iconic block here. But I should not have to tell you guys this, okay? This is a brand new project. That means we're gonna put a brand new needle in our sewing machine. So go ahead and take the two seconds to do that. And uh, I'm gonna just take care of that right now. So now that we've got our machine properly threaded and a brand new needle in it, Let's jump into the fabric itself. I'm gonna do, let's do red and white. It's one of my favorite combinations there. What we're gonna to need to do first is pull out our white and we're gonna make a couple of different cuts off the bolt here. You can do it off of fat quarters. I mean, there's a million ways to do this. The very first measurement that we're gonna to have to cut off here is a three and a half inch little tiny square. So I'm going to just bring it over here, line it up with my edges cut off my excess, and then I'm gonna cut out one three and a half inch square. Obviously that's not a three inch square, but since I have salvages here at the bottom, I'm gonna square the whole thing up. All right, now we can make a three and a half inch square here. So I'm gonna cut this down to three and a half inches, turn it here, do the same thing again. And now I've got my three and a half inch square for the center piece of my churn dash. So now it's time to cut out our pieces here. What I'm going to need is to cut out a two inch strip. I've already flushed up one side here. And 
and I've got my two inch strip here. Now I got my three and a half inch square, my two and a half inch strip. I'm going to need a five and three quarter inch square as well. And then we cut that again to finish off my five and three quarter. Onto our reds here. Now the red is a little bit easier to cut. All that we're gonna need is a two inch strip. And we're also going to need a five and three quarter square there. So first thing is I'm gonna trim up my edge. Two inch strip. Loving this red color. Again, I'm a really, really big fan of having two tone quilts. So let's line everything up. This, what I'm showing you, the way to build this particular churn dash is kind of the modern version. It's the fastest way to build them. It's the fastest way to produce more than one at a time. It's the best way to do this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab my strips here. I'm going to iron them, give them a really, 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 really good iron, guys. A really good iron. We're going to do the same thing to the white. So now that we have these perfectly flat, they're good to go. We're gonna put them right sides together and we're gonna sew all the way down the length of this strip here, which is essentially gonna give us those side pieces of the churn dash all at once. Big thing here, take your time, don't stretch your fabric. New needle. So now that we have it sewn, we are now gonna press everything to the dark side, which means we're gonna press the seam over towards the red in this case. So I'm gonna do that right now. So white side down, I'm gonna just press this all the way down. Let's just be honest, ironing's half the battle. Make sure that you sew the best that you can, but make sure you're ironing it just as well. I mean, come on, look at that. That's a good seam right there. Now that we have that into place, we need to chop this down into a three and a half by three and a half inch square. Now, if you've sewn a little bit wonky, it's gonna be a little bit off. Luckily, since there's a straight line sewing here, we can simply square it up and you'll be fine. So let me grab my tool here. That's not the right one. Move these out of my way and I'm going to chop down. I need four of them to make a singular block. As always, since I'm dealing with salvage edges, make sure you don't accidentally sew in a salvage edge. I can't tell you how many times I see that. Do not sew, sew in a salvage edge. The three and a half there. So guys, in just one strip, I could cut out a whole nother set of these, no problem, but I'll save this for later. So just like that, one of the hardest parts of this whole thing, already done, really simple. That's the reason why everyone loves this block. So I'm gonna push those off to the side. Now I'm gonna show you how you make your half square triangles. So for your half square triangles, you're gonna take one of your red squares, one of your white squares, put them down right sides together, and you're gonna sew all the way around this square. All the way, the, the full 360 there, And when I mean all the way around, I literally mean you're gonna sew all the way around. So most people are gonna be like, why did you do that? Now listen, I'm showing you the, the more modern techniques of how we build these blocks these days which is you can make multiple half square triangles at a time, which is very, very nice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this corner to corner. I'm gonna cut it directly in half, corner to corner, not side to side, okay? It won't work side to side. Corner to corner, I'm gonna pull my ruler. I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. Which now everyone's gonna be impressed because that just made myself the four half square triangles that I will need for my churn dash. I mean, we're almost done with this block. It's such a simple, easy block to do. So now I'm gonna iron these to the dark side again. So let's do that. And guys, if you ever have a fold over like this, I mean, it really takes two seconds to fix that. 
Always fix that. Your ironing literally is half the battle. Boom. It's time to square up these half square triangles. So guys, I'm pulling out a square ruler for squaring up half square triangles. Either get yourself a square ruler or a specialty tool that does that for you. So, so to square up, you're gonna line up your 45 degree angle on the diagonal line that you have made naturally by your fabric, because that's the way we've sewn it, and you're gonna trim off two sides. And you wanna trim off the least possible that you can on your very first cut. There's no measurement here, it's just making sure your sides are square. Once you have that, you're gonna rotate it a full quarter, I guess that's a half turn. We can now square it up to the finished size, which is going to be three and a half inches. Now, how to do this? We're gonna use the lines on our board here, and I'm gonna move this down so that my diagonal line is riding right across that seam, and I've got my three and a half inch line going both directions here in the corner, and it will leave me with a perfect three and a half inch square. Perfectly ironed, perfectly squared, half square triangle there. That right there is one of the most fundamental pieces of like your tool bag. You gotta know how, how to do this and how to do this accurately. So I'm gonna finish up doing this to all my blocks here. So now guys, it's time to do this. It's time to finish up this block. It's time to make it into the beloved churn dash. What we're gonna need to do here is I'm gonna put my little stripies, uh, I don't know what you wanna call these, with all the red sides pointing in. Then we're gonna add our half square triangles in here as well, with the red pointing towards the center, which will give us the iconic look, the iconic churn dash, just like that. Now, like I said at the beginning of this video, this is a traditional nine patch block, meaning you have nine separate sections which makes up the block in itself. Most quilt block construction looks a lot like this. So, nine patches, we love them to death, eventually we'll do something on a nine patch, but I'm gonna go ahead and assemble this. All I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be sewing the left and the right side to the center on all three rows here. That way I know my rows are good, iron those completely out, and I'm gonna sew my rows right together, so. Now that I got my rows here, time to finish assembling this block. Okay, just put them right sides together, make sure my seams line up. Adding the next side on. Now onto the ironing board, let's iron this thing out. One thing I really like to do once I'm down at this stage is I might hit it with some starch. And guys, just like that, that is your completed churn dash block. Now, I'm gonna show you this in a blue colorway here quick, but the simplicity of it is what makes this such an amazing block and why it's been used for hundreds and hundreds of years. Now, you could do a ton of different things with this. For instance, you could add a additional kind of quilt block in the center of this churn dash. You can make it bigger, you can make it smaller, you can change out the colors, you can add prints. I mean, go crazy with this. However, do a fundamentally classic two-tone version of it to hone in your skills here. Learn how to press everything down properly. You'll realize that a lot of the techniques used in this block is the building blocks for most of the other blocks out there. So before you guys click off here, make sure you check out this video up in the corner here, which is a quilt made out of churn dashes, a full tutorial on that as well by us here at Soya Quilting. Also, if you've seen anything that you like, sewing machines, threads, some of the fabric maybe in the background, make sure you check out SoyaQuilting.com or give us a call. Thank you so much and we'll see you on the next one.
and we'll see you on the next one.